Okay, uh, before we can understand how uh, geysers work, uh, we need to talk about why does water boil. So in the picture that is over there to the side, we have a ordinary glass of water, and let's say that that water is at room temperature. You don't notice that that water is boiling. So what is boiling? Okay, so that's when the water changes from a liquid state to a gaseous state. So in here, you've got different kinds of, of water molecules, and they're stuck together because of intermolecular forces. So it's basically electricity, but the water molecules are stuck together in clumps, and we're going to call those clumps uh, liquid water. And they're constantly moving around. So it's not like the, the H2O molecules that makes up this water. They're not standing still. So maybe this molecule is moving in this direction with a certain speed. And we represent the speed by the length of the arrow. So maybe this molecule is moving this way, but it's not moving as fast. And then let's say that this molecule over here is moving really fast, and maybe it's going in this direction. So it, the speed of these molecules depends on their temperature. The hotter the water gets, the faster the molecules begin to move. And just because this one is going fast right now, doesn't mean that it's always going to be going that fast. Because when this water molecule hits another water molecule, it could give some of its energy to the other water molecule. So if you can imagine billiard balls, so whenever you hit the, 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 uh, the cue ball and then it bounces into another ball, then that ball can bounce into another ball. And so these molecules of water are always in continuous motion. Now, when would it change from a liquid to a gas? So if one of these molecules was moving fast enough, it could actually jump out of the water. And so then it's going to turn from a liquid into a gas. Now, normally this doesn't happen at room temperature because you have atmospheric pressure that is going to push those molecules back into the water. So that under room temperature, water generally stays a liquid. Now even at room temperature, there's going to be a few molecules, a very few of them, that are going to have enough energy that they can jump out. And so given enough time, a glass of water will evaporate, even at room temperature, but it does it very, very slowly. So if we want to increase the rate at which the water molecules can jump out, well, then what we do is we heat it. So if we were to take this water and then put some kind of a flame underneath it, now we're giving more energy to the water molecules and we're making it easier for them to jump out. Now, let's say that we do this, and so we're giving it a lot of heat, and under normal circumstances, this water is now boiling. How can we keep it from boiling? Well, we're going to do that by adding more pressure. So that's the idea of a pressure cooker. So you'll notice that next to the glass of water is a pressure cooker in which we're going to put a lid on this thing. And so as these water molecules try to jump out, there, and more and more air molecules, water molecules, are now in the air, it's going to start to increase the pressure in here. And that pressure is going to start to push the water molecules back down into the water. So that means that it's going to take even more heat in order to get this water to boil. And that's the whole idea of a, uh, a pressure cooker, is the increased energy inside the pressure cooker is going to make the food cook faster. Now, what does all of this have to do with a geyser? Okay, so in the case of a geyser, you've got the ground is here. Underneath it is going to be some 
caves, and then these caves are going to be filled with water. So water from the surface is going to percolate down through the ground, and so these things are going to get filled with water. So, so far we don't have a hot, uh, a geyser yet because we need to heat the water. So down here is, let's say this is a magma chamber down here, and so this is going to be really, really hot, and that's going to start to heat up this water. Now, at what temperature should this water begin to boil at? Okay, you should know that in terms of degrees Celsius, it would be 100. So under normal pressures, under normal atmospheric pressure, water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. It will start to change from a liquid to a gas. But the problem is, it's underground, and this water is feeling the weight of this water up here and then this water here. So all of this water is basically on top of it the same way that this water here is on top of the water that's down here at the bottom. So this water down here is under higher pressure than normal atmospheric pressure. So that means it cannot boil at 100 degrees Celsius. So this magma chamber here is going to continue to heat it up. So now let's say that the temperature maybe gets up to 150 degrees Celsius. Well, it's still not hot enough to overcome the pressure. It's like the pressure cooker. So eventually though, let's just say for the sake of argument that it gets up to 175 degrees Celsius. Now this water begins to boil, okay? Even though it's under very, very high pressure caused by the weight of this water, this water is going to eventually start to boil. Now as it changes from a liquid to a gas, its volume does what? It expands. So as its volume expands, it's going to start to push this water out of the geyser. So this water is going to start to flow out. Now as this water flows out, what's going to happen to the pressure on this water down here? It's going to start to decrease, which is going to make it even easier for this water to boil. So once you get the water starting to flow out of the geyser, more and more and more water flows out until this chamber down here is completely empty, which means that this chamber is empty and this chamber is empty. Okay, then what happens? Well, you still have all of this water will accumulate on the surface around the geyser, and so that water will begin to flow back in, and at first it will fill this chamber, and then it'll fill this chamber, and then it'll fill this chamber, and then it starts to heat up again. And so again, it's going to heat up until it gets to around, let's say, 175. And then at that point, it changes from a liquid to a gas, and it starts to force this water out, and then you have another geyser happens. And so this goes, happens over and over and over again. And so that's how a geyser works. All right, in our next segment, we're going to start talking about karst topography and caves.